been a hell of a week for xbox with the cma blocking the merger of activision blizzard in the uk and redfall releasing to a very bad reception plus an interesting interview with phil spencer it seems very much doom and gloom for us xbox fans should we be worried to answer that question i'm here to talk about a lot of different things to unpack the last couple of days uh, and just talk about what the state of xbox is yes you should be worried no you shouldn't be worried let's talk why now i'm not going to sit here and say everything is fine and dandy with the state of xbox right now with the games and such but i do think the same point persists xbox has no games first party uh, titles are lacking and a lot of them are just like straight up bad i kind of want to disprove a couple of those myths because there's a lot of you know the, the console war type bias that i think goes on and honestly let's just analyze it because there's a lot to talk about take for example some of the highest scoring games on the xbox series x and s for this generation we have forza horizon 5 it is currently sitting at a 92 on metacritic we also have psychonauts that came out this generation yes double fine released this onto other platforms but it is still an Xbox exclusive in the future of any Double Fine games. I know it's on other platforms, but still it's owned by Microsoft. Therefore, it's what I'm going with. This is my video. God damn it. Then we also have the Flight Simulator game. Very well received, sitting at 90 on Metacritic. And then also more recently, Hi-Fi Rush, sitting at an 87. Now, I know reviews do not tell the full picture of a game, the number and required. I don't really like putting numbers to a review if that makes sense sometimes it's kind of like you can give an arbitrary score and then the game is actually better than that arbitrary score but i'm not going into that now what do all of these games have in common not a lot because apart from being a video game and owned by microsoft forza is a racing game psychonauts is an action adventure game similar to hi-fi rush but one is a rhythm based action game and they all have like a cartoon like art style, I could say. And then we also have a simulation game like Flight Simulator. From the way I see it, a lot of these games are appealing to very niche audiences within, even though they could be big audiences, they're very niche. Forza for racing fans, Flight Simulator for people that enjoy flight simulators. We are action adventure games. But a couple of the games, because they're so wide in variety and the specific audiences, there isn't that massive hype factor that we get from games from other platforms such as god of war horizon ghost of tsushima or mario and zelda they have this pulling power now microsoft does have that with gears and halo gears of war we've not seen a game since 2019 and currently we're sitting in 2023 so we may see something at the showcase in june but then also halo has kind of fumbled it when it came to you know it's got one of the highest scores for a single player game but it failed on a lot of the promises and stuff and it didn't really get the hype factor that it needed to get to sony knows what these experiences are and so does nintendo it builds the generation um, the builds the hype and the buzz we've got zelda coming out this week we've got you know god of war not long just came out and we've also got a new dlc for horizon and such but whilst i think that the experiences are phenomenal and wonderful if i had to pick these apart they only appeal to one specific type of audience, in my opinion, which is people that like third person open world games, third, third person action open world games, if you want to put it bluntly. And not so that's bad or that people are playing that game, but you can see what the strategy is from Sony. And I would like to see them, you know, branch out. And we haven't really seen that. It's all kind of the same type of stuff that they're bringing out. And that's why I, you know, like what xbox is doing i also like what nintendo does as well there's a lot of variety there and you know sometimes not having the variety isn't a selling thing for them but i'm kind of going down a point where basically I'm trying to say is that having just one genre of games that is amazing and sells well isn't always best for you know keeping people happy and even though sony fans are very happy i'm sure they are i've played a lot of those games and they're fantastic but i will say that I've also played a majority of games on the Xbox, a variety of them. And it allows me, especially with Game Pass, to try out those new experiences and actually have a blast. So, you know, it, the moment, it's a combination between 
the pulling power of a new game such as Starfield or a new Gears game or maybe a new IP, but sometimes new IPs hasn't got that pulling power. Maybe Redfall could have been that. Redfall kind of fell down on its knees and it was just simply awful, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, there's other games that are out there and I'll talk about them more in a moment. What I do want to talk about and address in this video, though, is this week we've been able to get an interview with Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox. And he had a very honest interview, which provides a lot to discuss. So first statement is we're not in the business of out consoling Sony or out consoling Nintendo. There isn't really a great solution for us to win. And I know a lot of people will be uh, upset, but the truth of the matter is when you're in third place in the console marketplace and the top two players are as strong as they are, and have a certain case, a very discreet focus on doing deals and other things that kind of make it being hard for the Xbox and for us as a team. That's on us, not on anybody else. So what he's trying to say here is that the, the hardware sales are essentially, you know, a massive part of the, the race that what, you know, Microsoft are trying to do. And I would disagree because I feel like what Microsoft does is it provides a massive ecosystem that i feel is greatly underappreciated having the ability to play on pc xbox and the cloud and also be able to put like if you jerry rig steam decks you can play them on there as well and you can also play with your friends across all of them i think that's very very underrated rather than being like oh i can't play that game with you because it's on playstation or i can't play that game with you because it's on nintendo that's what the selling point is but i understand that the xbox platform as you know hardware sales are just not there but i feel like the reason is that you know you don't need to sell a bunch of hardware is because they have the ability to get games on other places and i feel like that's kind of what's lost here the next statement though is the one that i disagree with quite a lot and then i also have a little bit more on um the the, the last statement and the second statement is i see it out there I see commentary that if you just build great games, everything will turn around. It's not just, like, it's not true that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're going to see console share shift in some dramatic way. We lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation where everybody built their digital libraries. This idea that if we just focus more on great games on our console, that somehow we're going to win the console race. I don't think uh, this doesn't relate to the reality of what most, uh, for most people. Right. So here's where I disagree. Number one, yes, there's a bit of conflicting ideas. Are they trying to sell more consoles? Are they trying to, you know, that's what they want to be. They want to be the leader in the market like they were in the 360 era. But here's the thing. If you build great games, it will work. It worked with Nintendo. The Wii U sold very poorly. And then the Switch came out and it's like the, one of the highest selling consoles of all time. It's crazy and what i think that they need to focus on is the fans that they have the fans of xbox are fans of xbox because they want to be part of the ecosystem and they want great games to play they want to be champion it they want to be able to play that's the reason why they chose it they don't care about the console market they don't care about anything else all they want to do is play good games on their platform the reason why sony fans are all you know cheering because they've got god of war horizon ghost of tsushima their first party lineup is fantastic the same as nintendo game pass has its limits but having the ability to have things game uh, day one is fantastic but there needs to be just some stellar a couple of stellar hits that could really help the platform but let's go on with the, the last statement the last statement had a little bit of truth, but it kind of feels like Xbox, you know, had these system sellers, sellers like Phil Spencer wouldn't need to say this. It's like there's no world where Starfield is an 11 out of 10 and people are selling their PS5s. That's not going to happen. True. There's a lot, a lot of people that are going to sell their PS5s if Starfield is a fantastic game. But what it will start doing is turning heads. It will get people interested in the big green box. They have a cheap way to get in at the Xbox Series S. And then if they wanted to go up the Series X. And then also on top of that, you know, when there's some exclusives on the respective platform, that's what you go there for to go and play. You know, I use my Xbox a lot for first party, for third party stuff, but I don't play third party games on PlayStation. 
I played the first party titles and that's why I own a PlayStation for whenever they're out. That's the reason why I own one. If that was the case for Xbox, people would play their third party stuff on PlayStation, the first party, and then they would own one to be able to play Starfield on it. Or they have a PC like myself and I can play games on there. My main takeaway from this week though and from the interview is that Phil is being honest open and transparent which is more than i can say for a lot of big businesses out there in the games industry and also the focus may just need to be helping xbox studios that have been under its banner for a while and getting the next two years firing which is something i still very much look forward to a note to think upon though this is just some food for thought and my kind of theory crafting whether or not i you know i don't have this information but this is just what i make an educated guess you could say which is that the Xbox games that have been in development have been impacted by the acquisition or the development cycle could have been altered due to the process. For example, COVID happened and then things got pushed back from 2019. Plus also, Bethesda's only been a part of the Xbox banner for two years now. Uh, we've only seen one or two games from Bethesda that have come out, like Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop weren't like officially part of the Xbox. They were already like uh, contracted deals. And then, in you know, I feel like games such as Redfall and Starfield have been in development prior to the acquisition. Redfall in particular feels like there was an influence from maybe live service models and then it was ripped out and changed and didn't have things that didn't mesh. And whilst Xbox and Microsoft are responsible for those studios and they take the fall for that and the responsibility, the other side of the coin that the way I see a lot of the times is Xbox has done a lot of good for studios because it gives developers creative freedom without the worry about money because they can go on Game Pass or it just gives them the, the creative freedom to make games that they want to make. And sometimes they're successes, sometimes they're failures. And that's just the way that it goes with game development. It, having the ability to not be safe like a lot of companies do is what you know pushes us and gets some gets us amazing games in the future for example we can look at pentiment and grounded from obsidian they've been a part of the xbox um, family for a while one went into the preview program early access and has done really well all the way up until its full release pentiment was just a super like utterly different rpg that a lot of people liked um i haven't played it myself but i know it got good scores um, a few years ago, we had Gears 5, which looked absolutely stunning. And I plan on playing through the entire Gears series at some point. So maybe I'll do a video on that. I don't know. Plus also Forza, uh, Forza Horizon and the Forza Motorsport, Motorsport games look amazing. And then Game Pass deals with making with the third party devs. It just really opens up a lot. And it's why I get excited being a, like a, a fan of Xbox. I'm a fan of gaming, yes, but I've always been a fan of Xbox um, since I owned my 360. And... What I'm trying to say is that I don't think Bethesda has had enough time to be changed by Microsoft at this point to have those additional resources. Maybe they're seeing them right now and maybe Starfield's getting a bunch of attention right now because of what happened with Redfall. But I hopefully we'll see it pay off because they have a lot of talented studios and people that work there. But as we get through, let's answer the final question. No, you shouldn't be worried. Why? Because there'll always be great offerings from Game Pass. First party titles day one will also be, you know, future first party titles will always come there. They won't be for everyone, but I do think there's going to be something that interests you. Uh, it may seem troubling at the moment, but I still have a lot of faith and I feel like the pessimism and doom and gloom needs to kind of go away. Just think about this. We've got Perfect Dark, State of Decay 3, Fable, Everwild, Hellblade 2, Avowed, an un uh, unannounced in exile game, Indiana Jones game, and just a whole lot more. And we could see even more deals and stuff thrown uh, uh, out at the showcase in June. So what I'm trying to say is stay positive, have some you know bit of perspective from the situation, take yourself out of the, the, the fan mode if you are an Xbox fan. There's a lot of discussions to be had, but if you want to leave a comment and tell me what you think down in the comment section, please do do because i'd love to discuss this stuff and uh you know on more videos in future but like and subscribe to the channel as always and this has been jimbo and i'll see you guys next time Peace.